in today's class of operating system we'll be moving on to the next topic in os which is nothing but your virtual memory having seen your paging uh, structure of the page table and how it is done fragmentation and what are the methods to overcome the fragmentation we'll move on to virtual memory now what is virtual memory in operating system so the topics today we'll be covering is virtual memory what is demand paging and what is copy on write now coming to virtual memory before we jump on to the actual topic we'll see the normal example assume we go for a furniture store right so here they keep up some equipments or the furnitures that are being demand so tables study tables or you go for dining tables uh folder i mean folders where you can go for keeping your things so all the furniture related equipment will be kept in the shop for display and extra equipment which is not required will be moved into the some other space that we call it as a warehouse so whenever you require an item you dump take that uh, item from the warehouse and put it into your furniture shop and the items which are not in the demand you again move it into your warehouse so uh, all the items though you have all the items since you don't have your enough space you are keeping them in where warehouse and moving them from uh, actual shop to your warehouse the same scenario will be applied in case of virtual memory now till now we know that when you have a program and you want a program to be executed so program will be initially in your secondary memory and from the secondary memory your program should be present in your physical memory or we call it as a ram so when a program is present in your ram or physical memory then you can go for executing the program now if your program length is of 2 mb but your uh, physical memory size is only 1 mb so in that case you don't have an option of dumping this uh, 2 mb process into your available ram so in that case you don't have any possibility of executing this particular program so what we do is instead of storing the total program in your ram we'll be using a part of your secondary memory and store that particular program in your secondary memory and whenever required you transfer only the pages into your ram and we already know what is a page the given program will be divided into parts depending on the page size and each part of it we call it as a page so instead of dumping all the pages of the memory or program we dump only the required pages so to the user it is an illusion that even though the physical memory size is less so here it is 1 mb and it is capable of storing 2 mb and your program size is of 2 mb so even though your program size is large and your physical memory is less you are able to execute it so this is because of your secondary memory so this we call it as a virtual memory so making use of virtual memory or a logical memory we try to execute the program whose size is larger than your physical memory now we'll see how it can be done now uh why we actually go for virtual memory so we have seen that if your program size is greater than your main memory size still you are able to execute it how you are able to execute you are not bringing the total pages into your main memory you are getting only some of the pages now when you actually go for seeing some real process you have you might be writing some error handling code in your program or you may be using arrays for example i, uh, I have allocated 10 bytes 10 locations to an array but when i am actually executing my program i may be using only 10 locations so in these cases when you see this example you may either use your error handling code or may not use it or you may use an array of 99th location or you can wind it up only 10 so these particular codes are not at all required for you so that is no use of bringing them into your main memory and keep uh, making the space waste here so you try to bring only the part of the memory into the main memory execute it and you require the other part you try to get it it from the main memory as so here you can just relate your physical memory as your furniture shop and when you go for this particular uh, ram or you go for your secondary memory secondary memory can be related to your warehouse so you just get the items whenever you require and if you don't get the items let it be in your secondary memory whenever you require you try to get it into your primary memory the reason i mean these are the reasons why we are going for uh, getting only a part but what are the benefits of it so when you have a benefit the programs 
uh, which are larger than your uh, actual size can be executed and uh, because of this your CPU utilization will also be more and you require less input output swapping of the process and why the CPU utilization will be more because instead of dumping only uh, now if I have a physical memory of 1 MB instead of loading a total program of only 1 MB I'll just go for dividing it into two parts uh, where half of the part can be loaded with a part of your program one and the second part can be loaded with part P2. So two programs are present here. The throughput of the system can also be increased. Now when you actually see the pictorial representation here, you have your memory map. This is your physical memory. When you just check the thing here, the physical memory size is very less when compared to your virtual memory. So it has more number of pages when compared to number of frames here. So in this particular case, your virtual memory size is more than your physical memory size. Now we have we have already seen the advantages of your virtual memory also it can be used for sharing the system libraries. So this is actual logical view of your virtual memory where you have your code data and heap and you try to allocate the data from the shared library. So system libraries can also be shared process can also use this virtual memory by blocking it into the same thing and during a fork system called child and parent process both of them can use the same thing so shared pages can be used between two different process so virtual memory can also be used for sharing the data between the process now having seen the virtual memory you understood that instead of loading the total program into your physical memory you load only the part of the program so half of the program will be present in the physical memory and the later part will be present in your secondary part and whenever required you try to get it so now how do you decide which part should be present in physical memory and which part should be present in your secondary memory? So for that we go for using a technique known as demand paging. So what we do in demand paging is initially you don't get any part of the data into your physical memory. Let it be in the secondary memory. When you start executing whichever page you require you try to move it onto your physical memory. That's the reason we call this as a lazy swapper. So in lazy swapper until you require the page you don't get it into your main memory. So since you are relating with swapping of the pages this swapper can also be known as a pager. So if in this example you just see you are just loading part of program A is there part of program B and only some pages. So whenever you require a page go to your secondary memory get the page and store it here. Now, now how do you know? Uh, if I go for a particular process, I assume this is my process A and these are the different pages which are present in process A. And at that time, all these pages will not be present in physical memory. Only some of them will be present. So out of all eight pages, I could store only three pages in your physical memory. How will you know that which pages are in main memory, which pages are in physical memory? For that, we maintain a page table. So in the page table, you can just see that, that frame number five, frame number 4 and frame number 7, 5, 4 and 7 are present in your physical memory and remaining pages are not present. So for that a valid bit, you have a valid bit indicating, indicating V indicates that this is present in your main memory. This is also present in your main memory. This is also present in main memory and remaining all other bits are invalid indicating that the pages or the frames are not present in your physical memory. Now when you see uh, what will happen actually when you want a page. Now for example you are executing some instruction. So the instruction is load M. So when you are executing this instruction you go to that particular memory and try to get the data for M. And by seeing this page table you understand that you are having invalid indicating that the, the particular instruction or the particular variable is not present in your physical memory. So that we call it as a page fault indicating the instruction or the memory whatever variable which you want to refer is not present in your physical memory it is present in your secondary memory so it will generate a trap to your operating system and once it generates a trap to your operating system the operating system will go to your uh, RAM try to fetch the corresponding data and bring that particular page into the free frame which is available and update the same data in your page table making this as valid and write the corresponding frame number 
then you can restart the instruction. So these are the steps that are required for handling whenever there is a page fault. You are trying to access a page which is not present in the physical memory, then you call it as a page fault. Now, what is the performance of your demand paging here? How do you judge the performance of a demand paging? So, performance of a demand paging can be done by with effective access time. So, effective access time is be calculated using your memory access and your probability. And when you don't have any uh, page fault, the, when there are no page faults, your effective access time is simply your memory access. And if you have a page fault, you require some additional time is required to calculate this. And how do you calculate your effective access time? 1 minus P, you already know that is your probability value of a page fault, which ranges from 0 to 1. MA is your memory access time, which is randomly from 100 uh, to 200 nanoseconds. And P into same probability value 1 minus p you may have a this may be a page fault and this may not be a page fault and uh, this is your page fault time so how do you calculate this page fault time so if you want to calculate your page fault time what are all the steps that will occur when a page we have seen some steps now we'll see in detail about each of the steps so first uh, whenever you get a page fault a trap is sent to your operating system the operating system will save the user register and the process state and uh, you determine that it is a page fault and whenever you are getting a page fault you identify whether it is a legal so whenever you are getting a page fault you have to identify whenever you have a invalid bit so invalid bit can be in two cases one is the page is not present in the main memory but you have a legal access the other thing can be your page can be invalid when it is an illegal access. So when you have an illegal access, you don't try to get the page from your secondary memory to physical memory. But when the page is not present in the main memory and it is legal, you can get that into your main memory. So for that, you have to first wait whether uh, your device is ready to get the data from your physical memory. So all these are the steps that are required. And while you are waiting for the page to be transferred, you can allocate your CPU to some other user. And once the data transfer is done, then you can get an interrupt from the disk indicating that uh, the CPU can be allotted to this particular process. That's the reason you are saving your user register and a process state before an interrupt is generated and getting the details back. So in detail, all these steps are required and these steps are used for calculating your page fault time. But in practically, we will not use all the steps. We we'll generally go for using only these three parameters. What is the amount of time required for page fault interrupt? Uh, what is the amount of time required for reading in a page and restarting a process? So we only calculate these three main components. And in one other important accept of your demand paging is now I'm saying that you are moving from the data from your physical memory to a logical memory or you can call it as a virtual memory, right? Or you can even call it as your secondary memory. So in that case, what should be your swap space? So first is we want a more large amount of swap space or we can use the swap space or your secondary memory as a file system or you can use both of them. Whenever you are just swapping it, you can go for making use of files. When you want to overwrite it, we go for using the memory space or a secondary memory space. Now, the next topic which we'll be dealing here is copy on write. So when you go for copy on write here, we have a system called fork. So what will a fork system call do? This particular thing will go for creating a child process. So the process which is creating a child, we call it as a parent process. So two processes are created. So assume process one is your parent process and this is your child process. So initially what we do is if both of them have to execute the same program, right? So all same pages will be used by both of them. So you'll not keep a separate copy for your child process. So both the parent and child will access the same set of pages ABC. While in the process of execution, I assume the parent wants to make a modification to page C. So in that case only, the parent will create a copy of page C and try to modify it on the page C. 
so till then the pair, child can access the same previous date of your page c once the total modifications are done then the copy can be written into your actual page c so that is what we call it as copy on write so whenever you a process wants to write something then only a copy of the page is being made so in today's session we have seen what is a virtual memory where using this virtual memory we try to execute the program we try to execute the program which is of higher size than the available physical memory and we have seen what is demand paging and what is copy on write we'll move on to the next topic in the next class